On a late Friday night last month, I was working on a TIG weld for another project and was running into serious problems. You've been giving me a lot of trouble lately. I suspect it's this tungsten, but I could just be crappy at it. No matter how much I cleaned the work or how perfectly I ground my tungsten, I was getting sparklers and lots of gas bubbles and pits all over the place. It was not at all a usable weld. That is crap! In frustration, I opened up a browser and began searching for a solution to my sparkler problem. I happened upon a post from another familiar YouTuber who had been having the same issue. This same YouTuber had also posted another question a few years back about a pulse modification for an older welder of his. Thrilled that I had a distracting excuse to let my other project rest for a while, as well as apply my rusty electronics skills, I set about designing an inline TIG pulser that could be added to an existing TIG welder. Okay, so where do we start? What high-level blocks are needed for this project, and what parameters can the user supply? As it says in the forum post, the user should be able to change 1. The peak time, 2. The background time, and 3. The low current level. The high current level will be set by the pedal itself. To accomplish this, we'll need, first, something to generate or control the peak and background times, and 2. Something to switch the output to the welder between the pedal current, or the peak, and the background, or low values. This is starting to sound an awful lot like traditional PWM, or pulse width modulation, which is used in LED brightness control, motor speed controls, and to some extent analog voltage generation. First, a base frequency is configured. Within each period of that frequency, a duty cycle is then configured. This just specifies what percentage of the time in the period should be on versus off. I'll bet we can use off-the-shelf PWM components. So, while our high pulse is active, we want to pass the pedal value to the welder. While the pulse is inactive, we want to pass a set background value to the welder. We could switch between these signals using relays, but that would have several drawbacks. We could also use solid state relays or transistors. These don't have those same issues, but may drive the cost up. In the end, I chose to go with an analog multiplexer. These are like digitally controlled switches. A binary value controls which of several outputs will be connected to a single input, or vice versa. Let's go shopping! PWM Generator Oh, that looks fancy. Let's get that. We can also do PWM using a microcontroller. Let's get an Arduino. Arduino Nano. We can do better. I want to buy it now. 278. Five pieces, 10k ohm linear. Need cheaper. Oh, that's the one for us. A buck. Let's get some proto board. Cheap, cheap proto board. Uh huh. 74 cents. Let's get another bulk buy, too. Five pieces, 40 pin, male and female. Header. And I was thinking we'd wire the potentiometers up to the board with little DuPont connectors so that we can disconnect them later. Let's get a DuPont ribbon cable, 40 pin. Four bucks is too much. Let's do better. Oh, yeah. A dollar. Let's get that. Alright, so we should be able to cut the DuPont ribbon in half and use each side for our potentiometers and other stuff. And now we need our multiplexer. We get the raw chip for a buck. Uh, let's get a reusable board. Free shipping. Okay, we're good to go. Ten dollars, twelve cents. We can generate a signal one way, we can generate a signal another way. Got our inputs. We can put it on a board. 
We've got fancy removable headers. We'll have fancy connectors for our potentiometers. And we have our fancy multiplexer we can use as a switch. I think we're good to go. Ten bucks. Hey, thanks, China. The code on the Arduino is really, really simple. I just decided to bitbang the whole thing because the hardware PWM on the chip was too fast. 30 hertz was the lowest that I could get it to go without fooling around with it. We set up two pins, one for each analog value that we're going to read from the potentiometers. We have some scalers that we're going to use later to scale up the values that we read into a time delay in milliseconds. A little bit more config here couple of arrays to hold the values that we read from the potentiometers. We actually average them together to smooth them out a little bit. This variable is used to actually track the time delay that we're going to do for our high and low periods. A little bit of setup. And here's the main loop. We read the potentiometer values. We determine the high time based on the analog value and the multiplier. We set the pin high, the output pin, and we delay for the time that we calculated. Then we do the same thing again. We read all the potentiometer values, calculate our times, set the pin low, and wait for the appropriate low time. That's about it. So this is version A. I resisted using Arduino for a long time, having come from an embedded systems background, but they're so cheap, and all the tools really are easy to get started. It's a lot faster not to have to read through the data sheet, figure out where all the registers are, and what all the silicon bugs are. Much easier. So I thought I would be able to assemble this stuff on the breadboard with a camera in front of my face, and I just couldn't do it. So yeah, I've assembled the breadboard. But I'll point out what all these parts are and what they do. This is the Arduino Nano. All this does is create our high pulse and our low pulse. Its only output is being indicated in this LED right here. So the Arduino is reading the analog values from these potentiometers and using one as the on delay and the other as the off delay. That signal, that blinky light signal right there, is being passed into this 74451, which is a standard part, and it is a demultiplexer. Multiplexer, demultiplexer. So basically, this is a switch, which has one input and eight outputs. So you get to pick which output the one input goes in. My TIG welder uses five volts to generate the reference voltage on the pedal, which means all this 5 volt logic I can power right off of my TIG box. Older TIG machines might be 12 volts or 24 volts or some other oddball voltage. These two potentiometers, uh, one of them is to simulate the potentiometer used in your TIG pedal. So all we have to do now is feed this output into your TIG welder where the potentiometer in the pedal used to go. Remember, if you're thinking about doing this, that the purpose of this particular design is to be very cheap and very easy to assemble. Right now, this board is being powered off of the USB. When it's actually in service, this board and this board will be powered from the voltage that your TIG welder puts out to create that reference voltage. So if it's not 5 volts, then this circuit will not work for you as, uh, as it's laid out. I also wanted to show you an alternative design. I went with the Arduino because I happen to have these sitting around from a previous project. Um, also on eBay you can get PWM modules and these will create uh, with a, you know, a frequency that you choose and a duty cycle that you choose. The source of the on-off doesn't really matter. The problem with this is that it's too fast. The person I'm making this for likes to pulse very slowly. They like to pulse at maybe one pulse every five seconds or something like that. Very, very slow. I wanted to be able to facilitate that. There are two different ways to specify your low current level. I switched the design halfway through, so you may hear me make references to both. For a flat voltage level, you just give the potentiometer ground and plus 5. For a percentage voltage level, instead of connecting the other lead of the potentiometer to plus 5, you connect it to the voltage being created by the pedal potentiometer.
I have the Arduino plugged into just a USB power cable just to power the circuit and make sure nothing is shorted. Yep. Okay. Great. So the potentiometers are all hooked up correctly. I've modified the circuit so the background current is now a percentage of the pedal current. So when I have the pedal pushed all the way to the floor, the top of that waveform is the pedal current, your high current. The bottom of that waveform is the background current. You can see that they both change. The background current is now a percentage of the on current. Okay, at this point the welder is on, the board appears to be correctly powered, nothing has exploded yet. Um, the board is plugged into the machine and the pedal is plugged into the board. So I'm going to try to start a weld and we will see what happens, fingers crossed. Duty cycle should be about 50-50, let's see what we get. It's working! Sweet! I have a badly contaminated tungsten right now, that's why it looks like garbage. Now that's not important! It's pulsing, darn it! Thanks for watching. I wanted to give a quick warning about this project. I chose to experiment on my nice, expensive TIG welder. If you choose to do the same, you must take responsibility for the results. You also shouldn't attempt to employ this design if you don't fully understand it. I haven't done electronics full-time for several years now, and I've never used either of these parts before, so there's a fair chance that I've missed some nuance and just got lucky. Any number of screw-ups could easily damage your welder or cause injury. Just be careful. Thanks to Tony for accidentally providing the motivation for me to explore this. I realize his original post was several years ago, and he has probably purchased a new welder since then. However, I also have to consider the possibility that he placed that post there for me to find intentionally and has been using the design ever since. He is, after all, or before all, or whatever, an avid time traveler. Please do comment. I'd love to hear what you thought of this video. The device design, welding in general, whatever. Thanks!